Just how hard is it to make a mobile game in one day? Well, pretty easily actually. If we look at some of the most popular mobile games out there, you can see that some of the games are obviously easier to make than others. Flappy Bird is probably the best example of a game which became immensely popular while also being extremely easy to make. If you go on YouTube and search for tutorials on how to make Flappy Bird, you can probably find an endless amount. In fact, I can probably make the underlying gameplay for it in under 10 minutes. Just to show you guys what it takes to make a game like this, I'm going to quickly make Flappy Bird. All it is, is making a character that can jump a certain height. We can give our character a rigid body that'll handle the physics for that. We then need to create pipes which can move to the side so that the player will need to fit through the gap. We can then reposition those pipes so that we can create an infinite level. Once the player collides with anything, they are dead. All you need to do now is have a score and change the art and you pretty much have Flappy Bird. Now you're probably wondering why I just went through the effort of doing all that. Well, it's just a really long way of saying I want to make a very easy game. But first, we'll need an idea. We need something that's simple, but is also fun. The game should also challenge you enough to where it will keep you hooked. We can use other mobile games as a source of inspiration. For instance, I really like the simple swiping in Crossy Road, so I think I'll use that as the main mechanic. I think what might be fun would be making the player jump from tile to tile before the one they're on disappears, so let's try to make that. The first thing I need to do is make the player move at a fixed amount. I'm going to be spawning in the tiles at a specific offset, so I need the player to move consistently. With this, we can now figure out the tile spawning. The way it's going to work is I'll choose a random value between 0 and 3. Whichever value it lands on will be the direction the tile will spawn in, so either forward, right, left, or back. We'll be using a coroutine to spawn a new tile and also destroy the previous tile after half a second. You can probably see that it's a bit difficult to tell where the new block spawned in because it's all the same color. They're also overlapping at times. We also don't want the player's rotation to be affected by physics, so we'll need to use some constraints to make it affected only by gravity. In order to make the block stand out, we'll need to make each have a random color. We can also change the camera's rotation and position to make things more visible. I really like how the camera is set up in the game's stack, so I'll try to mimic that. Alright, so now things are a little more visible, but eventually the player will go off screen, so we can write a script which will keep our player centered. We'll need to get a reference to the player's transform, then set an offset from it. We can then use Lerp to move the camera to the new location with a slight delay. I set the background to a dark color so the tiles will stand out a little bit more. Another problem that we have though is that it's hard to know when the tile you're on is about to disappear, so we need a solution for that. I think the best way to solve this is to have the opacity of the tile slowly fade out. This should give a good indication of when you need to jump off. Now as much as I would love to leave the player model as a cube, we should probably be a little more creative. I'm not great at modeling so I wasn't going for anything detailed. The inspiration for the shape of the model was actually Mike Wazowski. I really like how disproportionate he is, so I wanted to imitate that. And now here's our finished product. I made the head a computer because why not? Now we can just swap out our cube for the new character, and we're well on our way to finishing this within the day. As it currently stands though, the new blocks spawning in aren't really noticeable, so I need a way to make them stand out a bit more. I came up with a fancy solution that makes it both stand out more, but also makes the game look more appealing. We'll be using Bloom from Unity's post-processing asset. This will make the tile have a slight flash when it spawns in, and I also like the glow on the colors with a dark background. I really want to dig into the moody feeling of the game a bit more by adding a strong vignette to add focus towards the center. It's a simple game, but making it look as nice as possible is never a bad idea. The last touch is that I don't want the background to remain static, so I'm going to dynamically loop through some dark colors. Right now, it looks like our character is too shameful to look at us, so let's make them rotate in the direction that they're jumping. The way we do this is by using Unity's Rotate Towards function. This function is similar to the Move Towards function we're already using to move the character. We can give a target rotation and over time, it will adjust its rotation. Our character really isn't jumping much, so we'll use Rigidbody's Add Force function to give them some ups. Okay, maybe that was a little too much. Alright, I think we're good now. One of my least favorite things to do is titling games. It either feels like it's a boring name or it's too overboard. I'm just going to go with something simple. We'll call it Tile Hopper. Now we can go ahead and add some UI to show us our score. I also added in an indicator above the head to show you that you are indeed progressing. In order to save high scores, I decided to implement Google Play services into the game so that even if you uninstall the game, your high score will be saved permanently. Now we can set up a fancy menu screen. Then we'll need to set up some graphics for the eventual store page and submit our game to Google Play. Alright, so it's been a couple days, but it finally got published to Google Play. I'll make sure I leave a link down below so you can play on Android. 
All in all, the game itself was super simple. Making it within a day was very manageable, but making small games like these are really important. I'm sure a lot of you can relate, but finishing making a game is extremely difficult. There's probably a ton of games that have been started, but never finished. So I highly recommend you guys challenge yourself to work on these types of games, or even join a game jam. As always, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.